the County of San Bernardino, California, is proud to support this program and encourages everyone to recycle, reduce, and reuse every day. Can you guess what this is? Any guesses? I'll give you a hint. You ride on four of these when you're in a car. That's right, this is the steel belt inside the tire, the thing that binds and holds the tire together. And it is recyclable. You want to know what all this is? Well, I'll give you a hint. People ride in these every day. I'm Joel Green, and welcome to Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that explores your curiosities. Well, today we got a quest letter from Cheyenne in San Jose, and she wrote, Dear Joel, I have always wondered what happens to cars when they don't work anymore and you can't fix them. Well, Cheyenne, because of you, we are gonna find out how cars are recycled on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. What happens to a car when you are done with it? Um, well, uh, you know, if it doesn't work, you send it to the junk, and I guess they recycle and make new cars out of it. Okay, I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> um, it should go to a, junk, a, a junkyard so it can be um, safe for other people to use, like maybe in a used car. <laughs> um, it gets recycled, and and once it's recycled, it, it comes it becomes a new car. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're out here at Pacific Coast Recycling with Brian. Now, Brian, you're gonna teach us how to recycle a car, right? Absolutely. How does it all start? Well, it all starts when somebody's tired of their car. They trade it in, it's no longer something that they want to drive around. It goes through an auction process, and eventually it winds up at an auto recycler. They'll take the car in, drain all the fluids out of the car, take any hazardous material out of the car. Then they'll use it for parts. So they'll take what usable parts are off of it, refurbish those, sell those back to the public as a cheaper alternative to somebody going out and buying something new. When all the parts have been picked off the car and it's no longer usable, they'll flatten the car and they'll bring it over to us. And then that's when we take care of the shredding process. So the first part of recycling a car is actually reusing sure. everything that can be reused on the car. Absolutely, there's a lot of good components on a car that can still be used even after its end of its useful life as a complete car. There's a lot of parts that can pull off and re recycle and salvage. Okay, all right, and so after the car is flattened, <laughs> Then it comes to you, huh? Then it, then it comes to us. They're flattened, they come in on the truck, we unload them, and then they go into our shredding machine. And we use a mix of flattened car bodies, appliances, and sheet metal. They go into a machine that basically grinds it all up and then separates out the metal from the non-metal. So wait a minute. You're gonna take these cars and you're gonna shred them, like stick them in a blender. Exactly, they're gonna come out about the size of your hand. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Auto recycling reduces air pollution by 86%. This yellow uh, or this orange cover, mesh, what is that for? Right, that's actually just to protect the other people on the highway. These cars are smashed, so a lot of things get cracked and broken during the process of flattening them. So they wrap this material around there just so that parts don't fall off while they're taking it down the road. Oh, all right. And you don't need to take that off before you remove them, huh? No, that'll get ground up in our process and uh, you won't ever see it again. I won't ever see it again. All right. Now he basically is taking these cars right to the front of the uh, line? Sure, we'll be putting those in the shredder here in just a few minutes. Really? So we're gonna, we're gonna this is the last time we're gonna see it in this form, huh? Shortly it will no longer be a car. 
My goodness, I can't wait to see it. All right, so not only is the steel and the metal coming out of the cars, but what other products are coming out of the cars? All kinds of things. You can imagine there's plastic in the cars, there's the cushions, there's the leather seat covers, there's foam, the dashboard material, the glass, anything that you can think of that would be in a car gets separated out through this process. So all in all, what, about 80, 90% of the car is recyclable? I would say probably about 75 to 80% in a really good scenario is recyclable. Wow. So instead of sticking a huge car in a landfill, you bring it to a place like yours, and you'll shred it for us, huh? Absolutely. Bring it on over. Bring it on over, huh? All righty. So now we're going to follow the process of steel. Since 70% of it is steel, Sure. we're going to go follow that. And yeah, it's on the other side of the facility, so let's walk over there and take a look at it. All right, sounds good. Let's go. side of the shredder now and obviously piles of metal behind us huh this is all the steel that's left over after we shred up the cars in fact here's a piece of a car frame that was shredded up wow it's heavy too wow so the the, the grinder just beat this to death huh that's right it grinds it up until it's small enough to fit through these big grates that are inside the shredder that are made out of manganese they're very hard and very thick so when the pieces are small enough they fit through the grate and they come out and that's what you have what's going on we have a few cars that just went through right it, it kind of picks up and slows down as the process grinds the cars up but this is how the material comes out in the end this is clean steel that's ready to be shipped to a customer that's going to take it and make new steel products okay you know this customer where is, where is it at? Right behind me. Right behind me? Yeah, we have to have a, we're happy to have our own steel mill right next door. That's not ours. It belongs to a company called Tamco, but we ship a lot of our product right next door to them. So I wonder what all these cars are going to become. Well, you'll have to wait and find out. Maybe it goes into a new house. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Cool. All right, so let's drive over to Tamco. Uh, uh, but, but, but not in this. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Every year, we save enough energy recycling steel to supply a city as big as Los Angeles with nearly a decade's worth of electricity. So what do you think, uh, a trunk, mm -hmm. a fender, a hood? I don't know. All right, so <laughs> I'm over at Tamco with Jamie. Now, Jamie, you had us put on these lab coats. Why do we have these lab coats on? They're flame retardant. So when we go into the melt shop and we melt all this scrap steel down, if any sparks come out, you don't get burned. Thank you very much for having us put these on. <laughs> Keep us protected. You're welcome, Joel. All right, so now Pacific Coast showed us how they turn the car into what's behind us. What are you going to do with this? We take the scrap metal and we melt it down and then turn it into rebar. Rebar, what's rebar? Rebar is what's used in the construction industry for building buildings and bridges and highways. When the car is recycled, what new product can it become? New parts. Another, another car can be made out of that, those pieces of the car when it's impounded and pounded. And another new car. So an old car will end up in somebody's house or on a freeway building a freeway. Well, that's pretty that's interesting. Correct. And we're going to see that process here. We're going to see how we melt scrap and turn it into rebar. All right. So Jamie, yeah. in addition to recycling cars, you also recycle railroad wheels? When a rail car is used up, you can see these wheels are worn out. They'll disassemble the rail car mm -hmm. and, and uh, sell it to us. You have quite a few <laughs> wheels here. Yeah, there's quite a few rail cars tied up in this. Wow. Can you do you actually get whole rail cars? No, we don't, but there's companies that disassemble them. Disassemble them. Now, in addition to these, I see behind me all these tin cans. Tin cans, that's right. Wow. 
So you will take these and put these through the mel uh, melting process as well, huh? That's correct. We'll put those in the electric arc furnace and turn them into rebar. So this is not aluminum cans. This is your like cups of soup and... Yeah, you can see in here, there's soup cans, there's aerosol spray cans. Oh yeah, glass there's, cleaners. Yeah, and... anything that's, any of these containers that are made out of steel uh, will go through the, the, uh, the, the collection facilities and get separated out. So when you put a tin can in your recycling bin in your kitchen, ultimately it's gonna end up here. All right, pretty cool. So let's go and see the furnace process. Okay, let's see the furnace. All right. My new pogo shoes. No, I'm kidding. This is a shock off of a car or a spring off of a car. And guess what? It's recyclable too. Wow, that's a big truck. 35 tons. Oh my goodness. it up with a crane and then we'll open up the roof with the hard furnace and we'll drop it in the furnace and from there it gets melted. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. In one year, the United States recycling of steel saved enough energy to heat and light 18 million homes. Jimmy, what happens if I touch this button right here? Uh, you better not touch any of that stuff, Joel. <laughs> oh, no? <laughs> you don't want a, an accident here. We right? don't want to wreck anything today. All right, so we're in the, what, control tower? This is the control room of the arc furnace. And I, I assume below us is the arc furnace. Here. That's correct. We use electricity to melt the steel. Wow. Now, I see, a, like, it looks like lava pouring out right there. What, what are we looking at? That's slag. So anything that isn't metal floats to the top and then gets poured off onto the ground. Now, you, you, earlier I was asking you about these, these cool glasses you have right there. Sure. So w that's how you could, what, what are those for? If you flip those down, then you can look at any of the hot things like that without hurting your eyes. You what, can look through them if what, you want. Oh, if I want, yeah, here we go. So I just, uh, what, do I clip these on? Sure, you can oh, clip those oh. on and now, <laughs> now you can look at the hot steel. Yeah, uh-oh, all right, so we're shutting it. Now, do you wear these glasses? Ooh, yeah, ooh, wicked, huh? Pretty cool, huh? So do you wear these glasses all the time? Or they, you have to wear them? Uh, you only wear them if you're looking at the molten stuff. You can see Pedro here is using his glasses to, to, uh, to look at the slag and look in the furnace. What does it mean to tap the heat? Explosion or I don't know. Water, like maybe tap water. You got me there. I That's got a you. good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. But I will research it. Yo, yo. That's You'll get sure. back to me? I'll get back to you. Give me your number. <laughs> <laughs> the steel that's in the furnace is called the heat. And then what he's going to do is, is tap it. And that basically means pour it out. Ooh. So, ooh, I like tech terms. Yeah. Tap the heat. All right. All right. So, Jamie, I pulled my glasses, my your glasses back down. <laughs> and, and what are these things right here? Uh, those are the electrodes, and oh. they're the things that make the electric arc. Oh. It's made out of graphite, same stuff as in your pencil. Really? That's right. So your pencil is fireproof? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, it's like a big 24-inch wow. around uh, piece of pencil. Right on, so th this is like when everybody clears the floor and, and... Oh, yeah, they all get out of the way at this point. Oh, there we go. Whoa! Oh, my goodness, it's like a volcano. You, you guys see this all the time. Whoa. <laughs> so it's like no big deal for you guys, but. Oh my goodness. Every time. It takes about an hour to make a batch of steel. 
or heat as we call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we do that about every hour. Okay, Joel, you want to turn the furnace on? Do I want to turn the furnace on? Show me what to do. Right here, all right. Okay, pull that lever right there and it's gonna turn it Switch on. Put you to this, like this? All right, like this. There you go. There it goes. Woo, the lights lit up. I said, now they're gonna go in and melt everything up, huh? That's right. Oh my goodness. Those gotta be hot. <laughs> so the arc is being created at the end of those electrodes. That's right. And the, the arc is about 10,000 degrees, and that's what melts the steel. And that's about the same temperature as the surface of the sun. So when you said an hour, this is the part that takes an hour to melt? No, the whole process, from, from melting it, to pouring it out, to the time when you load it up with scrap and melt another one, it takes about an hour. dog without a tail. When it melts something, I don't know. When it, when it explodes. Okay, a brand of wheels. There you go. My husband told me. <laughs> solidified on the caster, and it weighs about one ton. All right, so a car is becoming a billet. A car is becoming a billet. Even they've gone green. going to be about this big around. That, so we're going to take something that's about this big around and squeeze it down to being about this big around. Wow. 
Jamie, you guys actually recycle your byproducts also, huh? That's correct. Making steel, obviously you can see in the furnace, makes a lot of smoke and dust. And so we have a giant bag house, which is the machine that you see behind us. All the ductwork coming down through some fans into this bag house, it's like a giant vacuum cleaner. And it's got thousands of bags in it, kind of like the bag in your vacuum cleaner. And what that does is it pulls all the dust out of the melt shop, and then we collect it. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. During World War II, salvaging metal scraps from corsets saved enough metal to build two warships. OK, so we've heated the billet back up to 2,000 degrees, and it's coming into the rolling mill. It's gonna, it's gonna go through these stands and these big rolls are gonna, are gonna, are gonna squeeze the billet and elongate it, and stretch it to a smaller oh, size. Oh yeah! Wow! Every time it goes through one of these stands, it gets a little smaller. I can see that. And what's the, all the water is? What's the water doing? Cooling it. The water's keeping the rolls cool and all the machinery cool. I, I see it twisting. Yep. It's twisted and going into another. There's grooves in the roll. So 20 foot long billets have turned into 1,000 feet long rebar, huh? That's right. Wow, these it's, things are flying. Yeah, it's going about about 25 or 30 miles an hour when it comes out of the mill. There's a, obviously we can't fit 1,000 feet on this cooling bed, so it cuts it into 240 foot pieces. Wow. And, this, and this machine helps take that bar that's going 30 miles an hour and stops it and then now it walks across the bed so it cools off. So they've already been cut when they're coming out of here, right? That's right. So these are 240 feet long single pieces. That's right. And each, basically each groove had the entire billet in it. So if we stretched out all three of these, it equal 1,000 feet. It would equal, uh, uh, four of these would equal 1,000 feet. Four of these would equal 1,000 feet, which is one billet. That's right. And each, each one of these has three pieces of rebar in it. So really, there's 3,000 feet of rebar that comes from one billet. Oh my goodness. They're huge. Yep. Now, uh, we, obviously, they're really hot still. <laughs> yeah, they're cooling down as they, as they walk across this machine. And by the time they get to the other side, they're cool enough that they're no longer like a piece of spaghetti. And we can, uh, we can cut it into 20 foot or 40 foot or 60 foot pieces, which is what our customers want to buy. OK. So now, obviously, the last one's right there. Now, will this end up rolling? Oh, yeah, it's just going to walk its way off, huh? That's right. Oh, so hey. when he gets enough bars, he'll he'll run it over, and it'll go through a machine that'll just cut them, just like a scissors. Really? Yep. Right in front of us here? Uh, down there. Oh, so they go further down. Yep, yep. These uh, There's conveyor rolls, and it'll take that whole layer of rebar and roll it on down to the, to the machine, which will cut it. 60 foot pieces are the most common end use for our customers. Okay, and then we build freeways and buildings and everything above. You gave me one of these pieces, huh? There's a piece of rebar. That's, that's what it is. So that's rebar, and this is what holds up the buildings and the freeways. It's, it's what you put in concrete, and that's what they're. Reinforced concrete is, is that's which is in buildings and freeways has concrete and the rebar is what gives it its strength. I can't bend it. It's pretty tough stuff. And it's not 2,000 degrees. You cooled it down for me. We cooled it down and now you can't bend it anymore. But you know what though? I could play drums with them. That's right. <laughs> but it's still flexible enough that if there were an earthquake, they actually bend pretty well. Oh, okay. For that's right. It keeps things from crumbling apart if you have an earthquake as well. Wow. Well, Jamie, thank you very much for taking us through the process. It's hard to believe that this was once a car. That's right. <laughs> and, and metal and all the other things, huh? Yeah, and so we melted it down and we turned it into rebar. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Wow, just look at all these cars. I want to thank Brian from Pacific Coast and Jamie from Tamco for teaching us how they turn cars 
into rebars. And I especially want to thank you, Cheyenne, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest. You know, if you're curious about something and you want to send us on a green quest, go to kvcr.org, click on the Curiosity Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And who knows, it could be you that sends us on our next great adventure. Well, remember, it is our planet, and it's our responsibility to take care of our planet. So I'm curious, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. I can't exactly drive away in these, can I? <laughs> oh well. Unfortunately, everything has an end, including this car.